So in a combination of the instrument, what the sound is that you need, the style, and that's another thing with styles. Um, you know, when I was starting out, well, we need Chet Atkins. And I freeze, you know, Chet, you want Chet Atkins? Call Chet Atkins. That was, we need West Montgomery. Well, he's not around anymore, so I don't know. So, so, I, so I found out, well, you know what? If you, if you, you don't have to be that person, you want to get that sound. And so if I want to be like Wes, if I listen to Wes a little bit. That's, that's going to say, well, that's, that's Wes, okay? And uh, who else? Well, Chet Atkins. Who well, we want to be Chet Atkins? Well, I'll never be Chet Atkins. No one will ever be Chet Atkins. Maybe Tommy Manuel. He could be Chet Atkins. If I play that, perfect. It's not about, you know, I'm going to play two tunes at once. You hear Chet do and all this stuff he does. No, it's the style. So what you want to do is you want to listen to the best players in a certain style that you want to emulate. Somebody said, we want chicken picking. Okay, maybe, well, maybe you might want to listen to Albert Lee or James Burton because they James Burton wrote the book. And... Um, if you listen to them, you'll get a sense of what's going on. And what you want to emulate is not so much copy the licks they play, because when you copy, and transcribing licks is very good. It's good for you to learn what a player's hearing. And that's the whole key is hearing. It's not figuring things out and theorizing. It's letting your ear hear things, because the ear is, is working 24-7. It's not thinking about it. None of that. It's not analyzing it. It's hearing. And what, I, what I've also learned as a studio player and what I discovered doing record dates, in the 70s I was, I was doing a lot of Motown. And in Motown, there'd be five guitars on these sessions. There'd be a reader, two rhythm players probably, uh, a, a guy playing some fills, and that's what they would do. And a lot of times they hired me for reading, but a couple times... They, they made a mistake and hired and two reading guys. They hire me and another guy. And they say, well, Mitch, you know, play some rhythm. And what I discovered from that was that I'm a reactor. And what I mean by that is it's not something you look at a set of progressions and say, well, I'm going to play this. No, it's listening to what everybody else was playing. And in those times, this is in the 70s, um, rhythm section, we'd have rhythm dates. And you'd have the bass, drums, one or two or three keys, maybe three or four guitars, depending. And you're all, you're all doing rhythm tracks, and you're basing it on, well, what's going on with this song we're doing, which we've never heard. And maybe the keyboard player gets a little rhythmic riff going, oh, that, okay, that, that's working real well. Am I going to copy the riff? No, I want to find a, a space and hear something and insert that. We might be a rhythm thing, might be a little single note thing. That's the part that I found that I really like to do, and then I found out I was good at it. And they heard that, and then I started getting hired not to read anymore, but to play rhythm with the rest of the players. So uh, from that point on, I, I realized, boy, if I react to what I'm hearing, now this is not a movie date or TV show where you get a part and here's the part, you play the part, that's it. This is a record date where nothing's really set in stone. You have a little bit of creative freedom to add something to it, and that's why they want you there. They're hearing what you're doing. Yeah, get so-and-so because he's, he's going to add something to what, what we want. And uh, that's where you get players, and I've sat next to some of the best players in the world, and the thing about it is what, they wind up playing, and that's not, they didn't wa walk in and say, well, I'm going to play such and such. No, they came in, sat down, listened to what everybody's doing, and react to it, and it's like, wow, and, and it could be something just as simple as in the middle of something, just go, that's it, but it's right in the right spot, right in the right spot. So it's not about, you know, oh, wow, look at those chops. No, it's about, well, listen to that part. L listen to how musical that part is. So um, that's the way 
when I'm when I'm working like that, that's the way I approach those kind of sessions, and that's that's how I um, feel is my strong suit is that I react. If I if I fight it and don't react, I won't play the right thing. If I just kind of relax, listen, play what I what I hear, it always works out great. So those are my words of wisdom, and I hope this explains. The, the, the 357. So now I'm going to go through and let's play a little bit with the um, different sounds. So I'm going to start out with a clean sound, neck pickup, and let's say, oh, maybe I'm playing a jazz thing. So there, there's a clean sound, sounds like any stock Gibson with a, the with a front pickup. Um, if we go in the middle, well, let me do the distortion first. Okay, so that's distorted. Now we'll go to the middle position. So this is the neck pickup, bridge pickup. Great for rhythm. You can still dial in, you know, the individual pickups. Here's distorted. So I feel like the burst buckers, you know, even I'm, I got two pickups on, which I normally wouldn't do, but even if I, if I want a little bit different timbre, I can get away with the higher output with, with the front and the and the bridge on at the same time and get probably a useful sound for something. Okay, so now let's just go to um, the back pickup, clean. Very typical bridge pickup, 335, Les Paul. Okay, distorted. Typical Les Paul 335, not probably not quite as bright. You know, for those of you who play 335s, the 335 with the back pickup on are not quite as bright as a Les Paul would be, but they'll get this, they'll get a timbre pretty close. Okay, and the thing, the thing I like to, some people say, well, you know, you gotta, if you gotta have a Les Paul sound, you gotta have a Les Paul. If you don't have a Les Paul, you have one guitar. That's the sound you have. So work with it. Make it work for you. Don't be comparing it. Well, I wish I had my Les Paul. Yeah, you can go get your get get your Les Paul, but you can get the sound from from here. Okay. Now just the middle, and here's clean. Got a, it's got a very distinctive, very obviously mid-range rhythm sound, not too bright, not too dark, very useful. Overdrive. So yeah, it's got a very distinctive character to it, and actually I can't really get that sound from any other instrument except this one. So I mean, it's a P90, middle position. What guitars are you going to find with that? So I find this to be a really useful setting, either clean or lead, because it's, and I'm thinking frequency, where am I in the frequency spectrum? Well, I'm in the middle, so I'm getting a lead sound that's not quite as dark as the neck pickup, not quite as bright as the back pickup. Distinctive sound, okay. So now let's go to, um, all right, now I just have the neck pickup and the middle pickup. This is clean.
This is the sound I was talking about. This is the sound, this is a fat, I call it the fat strat sound. It just, it's so, um, it's just got a feel that I can't get anywhere else. It's just, it's just, it just makes you want to play. When I, when I first picked it up, well, I couldn't get off that sound. I was, I was playing stuff I never played before and going, wow, just, and just from, just from here, like I said before, hearing it that way was making me play differently. So that's another reason you want to experiment with the sounds of your guitar is things you try everything because not only will you get different sounds that you didn't expect, it'll make you play differently, which is what we're all looking for. So um, I find that very useful. Okay, overdrive. So this is the neck and middle. Um. So again, I got two pickups on. Normally I wouldn't do that. But if it works for something, yeah, I'm going to go there. I'll go there. And it's very workable. You can also, you know, you can dial one up, dial one down, and tweak the sound a little bit as well. Okay, so that, that's a useful position. Um, let's go to all three. So this, if you compare this sound to the sound I had with just the, the front pickup and middle pickup, it's a little brighter because I got the back pickup. Expressive, it's right. Boy, I got it. I got the the frequencies covered that way. It's it's fat, but not too fat. Mid rangey, which that's where the guitar lives, and bright, but not not real bright. Okay, now oh, I'm going to distort three pickups. You're going to say, oh, the guitar's going to explode. I'm going to explode. Well, let's see. <laughs> hurt? I don't think so. So um, why does that work? I'm not an electronics guy. I'm the last guy when you start talking about dB and this and plus two and plus, no, three, three plus two is five. That's about all. I'm, and you know, usually I can't remember that. But <laughs> anyway, use, useful sound? You betcha. Would I use it? Sure I would. Have I? Yes. So don't negate anything. Um, now, Middle pickup, back pickup, clean. Does it sound exactly like a strat? Mm -mm. But it's got a little bit. It doesn't sound like a Gibson either, does it? That's what I was looking for back in 1983 was a way to fit into a certain frequency that I couldn't get from the, just a regular, the standard two pickup. You hear that sound? That, that sound will fit right in the upper middle frequency and cut right through. So there, there you go with that sound. Now overdrive. Um, Again, I got two pickups on. Normally, well, I wouldn't have more than one pickup on. Why does it work? Again, like I said, I don't know. <laughs> I go by my ear. If, if it sounds good, I'll use it. If it doesn't sound good, I'll go somewhere else. So, um, I've kind of always operated that way. Sometimes it's gotten me in trouble. Mostly it doesn't. So um, I think these instruments that we all love, boy, just find out all you can about them, what they sound like when you're picking close to the, the neck pickup, middle pickup, or middle if you're playing a two pickup, 
and towards the bridge. Like this sound, if I was playing um, this rhythm, here it is towards the neck. Whoa, let me clean it up. If I go back here, there's another sound right there. It's just got, it's a little different timbre. It's a little brighter even in playing single note. Maybe I'd be one of the. If I was doing that, that's what I want. Oh, we need you to sound at oriental. If I'm up here, uh, I could just see him in the booth. Uh, who can we get? Uh, you know. So, <laughs> sound, sound is the key. Absolutely the key. Let's see. Did I miss anything? Um, I don't think so. Yeah. So that's the S three fifty seven.